I am often asked for advice on how to be successful. Honestly, there are million ways to be successful. And I am nobody to tell you which one is right for you. Each one of us has to find our own path. Having this opportunity to speak to you, I wanted to share a few stories from my own journey in the hope that they might resonate in some way. I'd like you to picture a boy born in a typical middle class family. I was that boy. What made us somewhat different was that my uncle played alongside CK Naidu for the Holkar team and my dad represented his university team and he was completely cricket crazy. The radio commentary was always on at home during test matches and my father followed every single match whether international or domestic. He took me and my brother along to stadiums to watch the greats in action at every possible opportunity. To his mind, there was no better use of our time. Like any young boy, I hero worshipped my father and my curiosity about this game that he was so passionate about grew progressively deeper. As I spent more time watching the game with him and playing it in my backyard and on the street, my curiosity gave way to interest. And before long, this interest gave way to love. The seed had been sown. I remember at some point in those early years, feeling like I knew deep inside me what I had been born to do. That finding myself in the Dravid household was no accident of birth, it appeared. I learned that sometimes inspiration just stares you in the face. Through my school days, I was getting more and more immersed into my own world of cricket. Winning the inter-school tournament felt like winning the World Cup. Captaining the school and state teams was my greatest mission. However, there is an interesting story from my school days which I would like to tell you. My love for cricket notwithstanding, my parents had the same doubts and fears as any other parents of our time. What was to become of me if all, if all I thought about was cricket? When I was in the 8th standard, they took, they took their concerns to my school principal, Father Coelho. I had just made the state under-15 team for the second year in a row, and the tournament was out of state and during the school term. My parents met Father Coelho and apologetic, uh, apologetically stated that as my cricket would interfere with my studies and school attendance, they could not ask me to go to play the tournament. They therefore sought his advice on the way forward. Father Coelho, after giving them a patient hearing, told them, you leave his studies to me, I'll handle that. You let him play cricket. It is a great adventure he is embarking on and let's support him. I distinctly remember jumping with joy in my principal's office. There were, sudden, there were suddenly others who believed in me and my dream and were committed to supporting me. It felt incredible. Had my school principal agreed with my parents' concerns, there, would, there was a chance I would have stopped playing serious cricket altogether maybe got better marks in maths and physics and my life would then have followed another script I learned that sometimes support comes from the most unexpected places and it can make all the difference in the midst of, in the midst of bar borrowing, class, borrowing class notes and from friends and furiously preparing for school and college exams at the last minute I was growing as a cricketer at the time we played many league and junior state matches on bouncy matting wickets. We traveled by train across the length and breadth of the country, often in unreserved compartments, staying five to six in a room, and in some, in some cases. It was a chance to get to know our country and its wide variety of people. The hard sessions in the nets and my performances at the junior level won me a state cap. And before I knew it, I was playing the Ranji Trophy for Karnataka in 1991. I did well using most of the opportunities I got and I ended up playing some of the best spin bowling I had ever encountered right at the very start of my career in the domestic circuit. Though we did not have the chance to regularly play fast bowling of international quality, I made up some unusual drills for myself. I would get colleagues to throw, throw down wet tennis balls from 15 yards so that I could stimulate what playing the top bowlers might feel like. I got many puzzled looks. To many it seemed like a waste of time. To me, it felt like essential preparation. For what? For everything that was to come. By this time, I was being talked about as a national probable. I even captained the Indian under-19 team. Question I got whenever, wherever I went was, when are you going to play for the country? Now, this is not something that I had any control over, but the question began to dominate my life and my being. 
even when it wasn't asked it was the elephant in the room i ended up playing 5 years of domestic cricket before getting my national break it was frustrating i remember putting a sticker on my kinetic honda which read god's delays are not god's denials as you can see playing domestic cricket makes you spiritual as well it it was a gentle reminder to myself to keep the faith as i started the scooter engine and loaded my kit bag each morning looking back now i don't i do not think i would have been prepared for the success i ultimately had at the international level had i not gone through the finishing school that domestic cricket provided spin or fast bowling easy or difficult batting conditions i was well prepared for anything the opportunity i had had to play exper experienced spinners in the ranji trophy helped me play won and murli tharan with confidence those wet ball those wet tennis ball drills suddenly didn't seem all that silly when i had to play the likes of megra akram and donald on tough pitches when i am requested to speak to youngsters i like talking about this phase of my life and liken it to the fascinating plant the chinese bamboo you can take a chinese bamboo seed and plant it in the ground water and nurture the seed for an entire year and not even see a single sprout in fact you will not see a sprout for 5 years but suddenly finally a tiny shoot will spring from the ground and over the next 6 weeks the plant can grow as tall as 90 feet it can grow as fast as 39 inches every 24 hours you can literally watch the plant grow what was the plant do doing during these 5 years seemingly dormant period it was growing its roots for 5 years for 5 full years it was preparing itself for rapid massive growth without this root structure the plant simply could not support itself for its future growth some would say the plant grew 90 feet in 6 weeks i would say it grew 90 feet in 5 years and 6 weeks this period tested my faith and willingness to believe in my own talent at the beginning of my journey overall i had an extremely gratifying career and many highs and a number of disappointments as well after a tour after a tour of australia last year it became very clear to me that the time had come for me to move on and make way for the next generation of talented young batsmen to begin their journeys just as i had done 16 years before it just felt right and i was happy to call time on my career with my family colleagues and friends around me i was touched with the affection i received upon my upon my retirement i had no regrets no unfulfilled professional goals and nothing left to prove to myself i had climbed my mountain the one i had originally set out to climb as a little boy At the start of my journey I had been inspired by my father's passion which I made my own. As I began climbing the mountain I had set my eyes on I received lots of support along the way from my school principal and numerous others. Tangible success might not have come to me immediately but my early experiences helped me build a solid platform that would equip me and empower me in the future. As I sat alone dealing with my successes and failure I got I got to understand myself better. the climb became everything to me and i immersed myself in it as i got closer to the top of my mountain i managed to remain focused and keep my eyes on the destination and when i finally got there i just thoroughly enjoyed being where i stood at the moment in time a sense of peace and clarity enveloped me it was then that i realized that you don't have to be number 1 in the world you just have to be number 1 to yourself reaching that peak is the highest peak there is Like a good mountain climber I'm now in search of the next mountain to climb. The uncertainty makes me nervous, it also excites me. I am back to being like the little boy listening to the strains of cricket commentary coming from the transistor in my father's studio. I would like to wish all of you the graduating class of 2013 some of the brightest minds in this country today, the very best as you embark on an exciting time ahead of you. And may you find the mountain that's right for you. give and receive support along the way be patient and persevere through the inevitable ups and downs that you will that you will face and importantly learn to enjoy the journey that you are about to embark on all the very best and thank you for having me